Hello and welcome to Bags of Action. My name is Steve and this is a five minute review of Mad Max from 1979. This is the original film directed by George Miller who went on to successfully direct a number of others in the Mad Max franchise with the more recent one Mad Max Fury Road. But this is where it all began with a very young Mel Gibson in the role of Max Rokotansky. In some ways the film is set up almost like Judge Dredd because it's a slightly dystopian future where society is on the verge of collapse. Criminals are on the rise, gangs are becoming more wild and criminals are becoming more daring. At the same time you have the police who are a very thin blue line trying to fight back and keep people safe and this includes Max who has a young wife and child. He's someone who has a good heart and really cares about his family and you can see the love that he has for them in all of the scenes that he shares with his on-screen wife, played by Joanne Samuel. At the beginning of the film, Gibson's character, Max, is much like any of the other cops. He's someone who's just trying to do his job and protect people. But as the film goes on, there's a gradual stripping away of things, of all the things that matter to him and all the things that make him vulnerable, perhaps. His best friend is severely injured gang start targeting him just for doing his job and he begins to struggle with holding in this rage which is constantly bubbling under the surface. When things go wrong at work Max resigns from his job because he wants to leave and escape protecting his family so that he can also maintain the grip that he has on his sanity. Unfortunately the gang follow him and target his family And thereby, what's left is no longer Max Rokotansky, it's just Mad Max, this rage fueled person who goes after them one at a time. He's judge, jury and executioner, much like Judge Dredd, and he has the weapons and also, in this case, a special high-powered interceptor car, which was a -a one-of-a-kind. This allows him to be as fast, if not faster, than the guys on the bikes and take them down one at a time in very brutal fashion. It's been a few years since I've seen this film and I've watched it a number of times over the decades so it's interesting to revisit it thinking about what is to come and also the more recent addition to the franchise. The film itself is relatively simple, a story of revenge and getting even but the character had so much more potential and also the actor who played him which is why it went on to produce three more films and Gibson became an incredibly popular actor in Australia and then in Hollywood. The running time for the film is only about 92-93 minutes so it's incredibly lean but many of the styling elements that Miller would become famous for in the future are all here which is why the film was such an enormous box office success. It was made for about 400,000 Australian dollars, but went on to make over 100 million US dollars at the box office, which is why they quickly wanted to make a second and then later the third film. In addition to Mel Gibson, another standout performance came from Hugh Case Byrne as the toe cutter. He was so successful in this role that George Miller would cast him in the latest edition, Fury Road, 36 years later, as another villain. It's hard to talk about this film without thinking about the others, but if I think about it at the time of when it was made in the very late 70s and all of the other films that were coming out around the time, it was quite different. It was interesting and it was unique. There were the hard man films where the lead action hero would save the day and go out and kill people. By this time, Clint Eastwood had been doing the Dirty Harry films for seven or eight years. Charles Bronson had been doing the Death Wish films and Bruce Lee had already made Enter the Dragon but there was nothing really like this, this kind of post-apocalyptic style of film and a background that was incredibly raw and unique as the Australian desert. So thinking about the film in that time but also with a modern eye I still think it holds up today as something very lean and good action thriller. In some ways I think the director and Gibson were still learning their craft and beginning to stretch muscles that they would both later improve in subsequent films. This was a really good start for what was to come. So though there's nothing particularly wrong with it, I think some of the other films of that era were better, so I'm going to give it a solid three bags out of five. 
Have you seen the original Mad Max? If so, get in touch and let us know. You can contact us by Facebook, Twitter, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below.